we're starting to do some lure fishing from the shore, mainly targeting bass, but also having some spinning for mackerel trips, some lure fishing for polyp trips, and possibly wrasse. Now this is the setup that I use. So we've got a uh, lure rod here. This is a 10 to 35 gram lure rod. And on that, I've got a 4,000 size lure reel. And that's loaded with 15 pound braid. And then, joined to the end of the braid, using a double uni knot, a uni to uni knot, I've got about three foot of 15 pound fluorocarbon. And then to the end of the fluorocarbon, a small link, which enables me to easily change lures that I want when I want to. Now this is the setup that I use for nearly all of my lure fishing that involves casting lures, casting single lures. And that includes from the kayak, maybe if I'm casting and retrieving lures for bass. But this is a very much a multi-species lure setup. So in other words, as I said, it's not just for bass. I can, I can use it if I want to go spinning for mackerel, if I want to go lure fishing for pollock, I, if I want to go lure fishing for wrasse. Any lure fishing that involves casting lures. But before I look at how I actually set this rig up, just have a little talk of, about why I've got this three foot section of fl fluorocarbon. Now on this rig, what I don't need is a shock leader. And the reason I don't need a shock leader is the strength of the, br of the braid, 15 pound, is more than strong enough to, to take the shock of the weight of the lures that I cast. And I very rarely need to use lures of more than an ounce. So the 15 braid, pound braid is more than strong enough to take that shock and therefore I don't need a shock leader. But what I do want and to use this for, and there's two reasons. The first is to act as a bit of a rubbing leader. And for those of you that are fairly new to lure fishing, what a rubbing leader is, it's a little bit of protection. Should I actually, let's say for, for example, if I get the lure snagged on a rock, or I draw, draw the lure over a rock, or over any abrasive surface, the fluorocarbon is much more abrasive resistant than the braid. If braid touches a very, very sharp surface, it can break very, very easily. So that's one reason, just to have a little bit of a rubbing leader between the braid and the lure. The other reason is that fluorocarbon is said to be virtually invisible in water. Therefore, it seems a good idea to me to have a little bit of separation, a little bit of invisibility between the braid and the lure. Now this knot that I used to join the braid to the fluorocarbon, the double uni knot, is a, is a knot I've used for many, many years. Now of course it's down to personal choice and there are other knots that you can use to join braid to fluorocarbon or braid to nylon. But this knot, if tied correct, correctly, is never let me down. So what we'll do first, we'll have a look at how I actually join these two pieces these two pieces of the line together. Now to join these two pieces of line together, so we've got our end of our fluorocarbon there and we've got our end of our braid here, known as the tag ends. And what I'm going to do is going to overlap them both and give plenty of over overlap so you've got plenty of line to work with. Then taking both pieces of line and holding them about in the middle of the overlap, you've got the two, the tag end of the braid there and the tag end of the fluorocarbon. So starting with the braid, I'm going to take the braid and then fold it back to, so it forms a loop over the fluorocarbon. Then I need to take this tag end, braid tag end, and pass it through the bottom of the loop and over completely over the top through the bottom and then completely over the top and I'm going to do that eight times 
and more times than I need to do it with the fluorocarbon. And the reason for that is because the braid is much, much thinner than the fluorocarbon, it's quite important that you do more turns with the thinner line. So taking our tag end through the bottom of the loop and over the top. Through the bottom of the loop and over the top. I think that was eight times, to be honest, I lost count. Then lubricate it using saliva. Then we're going to pull the tag end of the braid. To form the first uni knot. Now we've got the fluorocarbon tag end, so I'm going to do exactly the same. Fold that back so it forms a loop. And then once again take the tag end through the bottom of the loop and over the top. But in this case I only need to do it five times. Once Two, three, four, five. And once again, lubricate and then take the tag end of the fluorocarbon and pull that to again form our second uni knot. Now we're going to pull both main lines. So we've got our main line of the braid and the main line of the fluorocarbon. And we're going to pull so these two knots slide together. But once again, before we do that, just lubricate both lines. And then just pull. And they will slide. together and then just pull them tight and that's how that's how uni to uni knot but all I've got to do now is trim these tag ends now because this knot it's not a, uh, a shock leader it's only a, a short three foot rubbing leader when you're actually fishing this knot always stays the other side of the tip ring unlike a shock leader knot which is constantly being wound through all the rod rings and back onto the reel this stays the other side when fishing the only time it gets wound back through the rings is when you're finished your fishing and you want to wind all your line back onto the reel so what I like to do I can trim the tag ends down flush but what I like to use is just leave a little bit of a tag end so that's it, that's our two lines joined together with our double uni knot. And like I said, I, I found providing you give a, a, a more turns on with the thinner line than you do the thicker line, at least five with the thicker line, but more turns, and I like to use eight. I've never to date had this knot l let me down. So now all I need, need to do is just to trim the, the rubbing leader down. And like I said, I like to have about, about a three foot leader roughly so we've got our rubbing leader now to finish this rig off all I need to do is tie on a, a small link so I can easily clip the lures on or change the lures when I want to and if possible, I like to use a link that's small enough. It's got to be strong enough, of course, but small enough to be able to reel through all of your rod rings. So when you're finished, you can reel the whole lot back onto your reel. Um, I know on some lure rods, if they've got very, very tiny little rod tip ring, it's not always possible. But on this lure rod and with this small link, I'm, I'm able to do that. So just going to finish off by tying this link on 
once again using the uni knot. So I've got the link tied on with the uni knot and I'm just going to trim the tag end down but I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch tag end. Well that's it, that's the rig, but just to go through once again what I've done. So we've got our 15 pound mainline braid coming down from the rod tip and we've got our three foot of 15 pound fluorocarbon rubbing leader and they're joined together with a double uni knot and then to the end of the fluorocarbon leader just a small link that makes it easy for me to change lures when I want to. Now the only changes that I might make to this rig is if I'm maybe on the kayak and I'm using it to vertically fish with single lures for toothy species such as cod then what I might do is up the strength of the rubbing leader to to 30 pound but apart from that any casting that I do casting single lures this is the rig that I use so once again I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching